Let's start off in our JPRO code database and do a query for all records and all fields of the employee table. Select star from employee. And we see our 12 records. Now, we can also see that Alex and Barry have the same working location. They have a different location than Lee, but Dave and Eric also work in the same place as Alex and Barry. They work in location one. Location 1 is the headquarters, but how do we find out where location 1 is? We have a way of getting more information about a location than just its ID. We have a location table that gives you the details of each location. Let's write a select query from the location table. Location is Seattle, Washington, more specifically, 111 1st Street. So by running both of these queries at the same time, we can see that Alex Adams works at location 1, which is in Seattle, Washington. Barry Brown also works in location 1, which is Seattle, Washington. Leo Saka works in location 2, which is on 2nd Avenue in Boston. So this second table is known as a lookup table. It contains more detailed information about the location ID as referenced from the employee table. Figure 3-2 in your book gives you another view of this. As you can see, Alex Adams has a location ID of 1. By looking up in the location table for more detail of that, we can see he is 111 First Street, Seattle, Washington for his work location. As a matter of fact, this process would be repeated for every employee in the employee table who has a location ID of 1. Now why do we just store location ID 1 in the employee table? rather than repeatedly storing Seattle, Washington, 111 First Street? This process of normalizing your database into related tables saves a lot of space. It also makes updating and maintenance of the database far easier. For example, let's say you had a thousand employees in Seattle and you wanted to move to a nearby street named 545 Pike. Well, all you'd have to do is change that one record in the location table rather than changing every single record of every employee who works at Seattle. So for the sake of space and maintenance, a database must be normalized. Well, that kind of makes reporting a little more difficult. If you wanted to see a list of employees and the details of where they work, you got to run two queries and look for the corresponding field in each table and then put them together. Well, you can actually view all of this information in one query, and that's what we're going to show you. Okay, I'm giving myself the maximum amount of room since we're working with two tables at once. Let's start off by looking at the employee table. Seven fields, 12 records. Location ID 1 is the most popular. Let's look at just the location table. Location 1 is Seattle, all the details, and all of the other locations are listed. Running both of them at once solves a few riddles. We know Alex Adams works in Seattle. Barry Brown works in Seattle. Lee works in Boston. But what if I wanted the word Seattle to appear over here? Not just city, but all fields of the location table next to the employee. How do we put two tables in one from clause? Well, we can do this if we know how these tables relate, and we do. We both know they have a location ID. But to be more specific, these are two different fields. This one is the employee.location ID, and this field is the location.location ID field. To properly name a field, you need to specify the table name with a dot and then the field name. Let's put both of these tables in the same from clause and we're going to separate it with the word inner join. Inner came from equa join, which means equal. These tables have something that they equate on and you can relate them to. So we specify that these two tables are related, but we haven't been specific about how they're related to SQL Server yet. That's where the on clause comes in. We're going to say the employee table has a location ID field, which corresponds to the location 
Tables, Location ID field. Run this query, and notice the location fields appear to the right of each matching record of the location ID from the employee table, and you get the complete report in one view. Here's another example of a good use of an inner join. Looking at the employee table, we've got no idea who makes how much money. How much does Alex Adams make per year or per hour? How much does Barry Brown make? Well, if we have their employee ID and we look in the pay rates table, select star from pay rates, and run just this query, we can see employee number one makes $75,000 a year. Employee number two makes $78,000 per year. Run both these queries at once and we get a sort of report we have to kind of look back and forth. How much does Lee make? Hmm, 45 an hour. How much does Lawning make? Employee 7 is 6100 a month. Okay, let's put both of these tables in the same from clause. Now let me run both of them again, and we need to figure out what they have in common. What is this field, and what is this field? Kind of a trick question. This first field is called the employee.mpid field. The second field is called the pay rates .mpid field. And here's the rule for doing joins. You put the table names in the from, and you put the field names in the on. So let's do that. Let's put both the tables in the from, separated with the word inner join. Now we need to name the two fields that they will connect on explicitly. On employee .mpid equals pay rates dot mpid. Run it and we can see the exact pay of each and every employee. Time for lab 3.1 on inner joins skill check one. In one query you want to see the employees and cities where they work. You know that the two tables share a common location ID field. From JProco Query both tables by joining them on this field. Your field select list should include first name, last name from the employee table, city and state from the location table. When you're done, your screen should resemble figure 3.8. Moving on to skill check 2. The grant table has an employee ID field. List all the employees' first and last names next to the grants they have found. Show the first name, last name, grant name, and amount fields. When you're done, your screen should resemble figure 3.9. And that is Lab 3.1 on Inner Joins. Next item, let's check out 3.1 and follow it up with the points to ponder.